Hey, welcome to church today. I'm so glad that you're joining us. If this is your first time, welcome to One Church. Would you take a second and scan the QR code? Uh, you can fill the Connect card out. It helps us get to know a little bit more about who you are and how we can be praying for you today. Take a second and do that now. Here at One Church, we wanna reach the most people in the shortest time, and our YouTube channel is helping us to do that. Hey, welcome to all of our new subscribers. If you haven't already, take a second, head to our YouTube channel, make sure that you like, subscribe, and turn that notifications bell on to stay caught up with everything we have going on here at One Church. We pray a very simple prayer. God, give me one person to share your love with today, and a great way to share God's love with someone right now is to invite them to watch service with you. Take a second and send the link to someone that God puts on your heart. God invites us into relationship with him because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. His life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. We're gonna share in a time of communion, and that's a time where we remember what Jesus did. So gather what you'll need, and let's be ready to share in that together. For God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. You know, we give God our lives, and then we give out of our lives. Thank you so much for your continued generosity. If you'd like to give at any time during our service, here's a few ways that you can do that. We're in our series, Bedtime Stories. Our memory verse is found in Psalms 107 verse two, which says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those who have been redeemed from the hand of the foe. Before we hear the message, we're gonna have a time of worship. We're gonna sing songs and we're gonna celebrate what God has done. Let me invite you wherever you are, give it all. Lift your voice, lift your hands, open your hearts, and let's give it all to the King. Oh, we look to the sun, yeah. We set our eyes on the Savior. See the image of love, it's Jesus. Sing his praises forever. Here it is. Oh, we look to the sun. Yes, God, we look to the sun. Salvation, tearing through the dead of night. Into color at the speed of light. Oh, it's freedom and a shaking of the atmosphere. Shake it up, Lord, our hearts as the shadows fade into nothing as the day appears. Beyond the skies above, love reaching out.
forget that. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. Sing it out. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet today, and I'll sing through the night. That oh. There's nothing, nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. Yes, you do. Oh, yes, you do, Lord. When all I see is a cross, well, God, you see the empty tomb. Hallelujah. What a Savior. So Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. Yes, you do. You win every battle. Undefeated God. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Oh, almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power.
thank you, Lord, that you make a way, that you're always with us no matter what. Oh, you are faithful and you are good. Open our hearts, Lord God, to what you have for us today in Jesus' name. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, and no matter what's been done to you, Jesus loves you. You have a place in God's kingdom, and you have a place here with us at One Church. Take a next step with Jesus today. You can simply scan the QR code or head to our website, fill the Connect card out, and somebody will connect back with you. Taking time to celebrate what God's doing in our lives gives us a heart of gratitude. Here at One Church, we love to celebrate five awesome things that God's doing in the life of our church. We do that every week, and it's called our High Five. Check it out now. Up at number five, Michael attended our Concord Outpost last Sunday and found himself ready to respond to what God was calling him to do. Having given his life to Jesus, Michael followed in baptism. High five, Michael. We're all celebrating with you today. Up at number four, this past Tuesday, our wise and wonderful group met at Bear Brook State Park where they enjoyed good food, cornhole, and a devotional. If you are 55 or older and looking for a place to build community, grow in faith, and encourage one another, Wise and Wonderful meets next on August 15th at our Manchester Outpost. So check out church.one slash groups for more information and high five to more times like these. Here at number three, right now, a team of people from One Church and Outreach Partner Mission Life are in the city of Kigali, Rwanda. On this 10-day trip, they're reconnecting with local friends, worshiping with churches, and serving people with many needs. So let's keep this team in prayer. High five to sharing God's love all over the world. Up at number two, recently our young adults group met up in Rye for a beach day where they enjoyed the warm sunny weather. It was a sweet time together and there's more to come. Young Adults is meeting for an event every other week throughout the summer. So if you're a young adult ages 18 through 29 who's been looking for a place to have some fun, connect with others, and grow in your faith, visit church.one slash groups to find the next young adult group gathering and join in on the next one. And finally, up at number one, our Manchester Outpost is celebrating seven baptisms recently. High five to Sally, Mackenzie, Dawn, Camden, Joseph, Amaya, and Janice. We're so excited for how God will continue to work in and through you. Thanks for joining us for our high five, and I can't wait to celebrate with you in the next one. You ever feel like there just aren't enough hours in the day? Does that feel pretty common? I hear that sentiment a lot. I remember growing up, um, there were three phrases I heard quite a bit. Uh, one would have been pretty regularly from my dad when he was trying to get us out of the house and get us on the road and get us moving. He'd say, we're burning daylight. We're burning daylight. You gotta get on with the day. Get out of bed, we're burning daylight. Get up, get out of the house, we're burning daylight. And then I remember my football coaches when we would have football practice and, and the practice would be going on and the sun would be starting to set and we didn't have lights out on the football practice football field. And he'd be like, we're running out of daylight. We're running out of daylight. We're no, there's not enough time to get in all the practice that we need. So we can never start early enough and there was never enough time to finish. And then I remember my mom at the end of the day, we'd be sitting there at the dinner table and she'd say, there's just never enough hours in the day. Never enough hours in the day. Always run out of time, don't we? Always run out of time. And yet here's the thing about our God. God. Our God never runs out of time because he's the creator of time and he holds time in his hands and he can do whatever he wants with time. This is one of my favorite things about God. Like, like when we say, uh, God, show us what to do and give us courage to do it. That's a prayer that we pray a lot around one church. God, show me what to do and give me courage to do it. In fact, wherever you are, you can pray that out loud. Let's do it together. God, show me what to do and give me courage to do it. God provides the courage. There's a lot of things that God is like calling us into like that, that, that feel like massive battles that we can't possibly face. Things are obstacles that are too much, that are too hard, that, that we just don't have the resources for. Yet God gives us the courage to step into those. You know what else God does? He provides us everything we need to do everything he calls us to do. And that includes time. He gives us everything we need to do, everything he calls us to do, because that's one of the things we do. Right? When God calls us into something, we might say, you know what, Lord, I would, but I just don't have enough time. Well, you're burning daylight. <laughs> this is your heavenly father. Let's get going. Let's get after it. Why, why are we having this conversation right now? We're just burning daylight at this point. God said, go, let's, let's go. Why are we burning daylight? 
And then we get into it and we're, we're looking at it and it's like there's, there's not gonna be enough time to finish. We're running out of daylight. And sometimes at the end of the day, we feel like, oh, there just wasn't enough, enough hours in the day. And I tell you, with our God, there's always enough hours in the day. We're in this message series called Bedtime Stories. And today we get to unpack a story about a time where, where God actually made time stand still. He stopped the sun in the sky and made time stand still so that the battle could be complete and the victory could be total. And this is a really cool story from the book of Joshua. Now, this story is important because as we share the stories of what God has done and we pass them on and we remember them, these are great reminders to us that our God will provide everything we need to do everything he's called us to do. He will provide the resources. He'll provide the energy. He'll provide the time. And so our memory verse for this series is found in uh, Psalm 107, verse two. I'd love for you to read these words out loud. It's so good to hear God's words coming out of your mouth. And so let's read them out loud together. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. Now here's the thing. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. If you have a relationship with Jesus, that's you. Can we get a woo-hoo for that? Woo-hoo. We are the redeemed of the Lord. You are the redeemed of the Lord. In fact, I'd love for you to declare that out loud. Say, I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am the redeemed of the Lord. That's right. And that's a great thing to proclaim because that's a a wonderful, beautiful reminder that God has redeemed you. God didn't just save you, God redeemed you. And if he redeemed you, that means that he's repurposing you. And that's important. That's important. That means he's not done with you. See, a lot of times that's what we think. We think, well, our life was so bad and it was so messed up and it was so broken and God was so disgusted with it. Yeah, he might save me, but he doesn't really want to have anything to do with me. And that is not true. He redeems you to repurpose you. He makes you new and gives you a new purpose. And in that new purpose, he will provide everything you need to do everything he calls you to do. And that includes stepping out in faith, taking our next steps of faith into what he's calling us into to share his love with our ones. We pray for one. It goes like this. God, please give me one person to share your love with. Can we pray that together? God, please give me one person to share your love with. And as we pray that God is going to lead us into our families to share his love with those that we're closest with the people that we live with, that we are under the same roof with, with our roommates, with our neighbors, the people who are in close proximity to us, our friends, the people that we're spending time with, our coworkers and classmates, the the people that we're kind of forced together with. All of these are opportunities that God is calling the redeemed of the Lord into so that the redeemed of the Lord can tell their story. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he's redeemed from the hand of the foe. And you have a story to tell. And there is a calling on your life and there is a purpose for you. Now, as we step into what God is calling us into, a lot of times it feels like a battle. Because I mean, and there are are indeed forces that are at work against you. You're not imagining that, by the way. Like taking steps of faith, it's like marching. And sometimes like you, you feel like God's calling you. Well, these are marching orders. He's saying, let's get going. We're burning daylight. Let's take steps of faith. Let's get going. These are marching orders because we are marching into a battle and our battle is very real, but it's not a battle against flesh and blood. It's a battle against the principalities and rulers of this dark world. It's a battle against the spiritual forces of evil that have dominion and authority in this world, but it's not against people. It's not flesh and blood. God is fighting for people to redeem them and repurpose them. And we are stepping into that with good news, but the battle is very real and the battle is very hard. And the battle is very costly. So I want to give you three steps for battle. Three steps for every battle that God might call us into. Step number one is my favorite one. Show up. (laughs) This is a good one. We're burning daylight here. Step number one, show up. Let's say it together. Step number one, show up. Right? This, is the, this is where this starts. If we don't show up, we're not in the battle. And if you're not in the battle, then the enemy doesn't really care about you. You're completely insignificant at that point. But God is calling us and inviting us. And that's a cool thing about him. This is something that we get to do. This is life with purpose and passion and meaning. Uh, This is life where, where God is doing a work in us and through us and with us and for us. But we get to show up. 
And so we'll pick up our, our story in the, the book of Joshua. And just to set the stage for you, uh, Joshua uh, was, came after Moses. So Moses was the, the person that God used to deliver the Israelite people, his people from Egyptian captivity where they were slaves in Egypt. And he was going to give them a promised land. Uh, but they, they were in the desert for 40 years. And Moses has now passed away and he's handed this leadership over to Joshua. Joshua is now leading the army of God and going into to this land to possess the promised land where they will uh, be prosperous and numerous and God will be revealed through the worship of his people, which is why we get to be a part of what he's doing here today. And so as we look at this, uh, the, the army of God that Joshua is leading is having a tremendous success and word is spreading all throughout this land. Whoa, these Israelite people who used to be slaves in Egypt, uh, they're for real. They're the real deal. Like news is spreading, like uh, this, this Yahweh guy, this, this God, this God they're claiming to, to, to be the, the people of, uh, he's fighting for them. And so there's some real chatter going around the region. And, you know, when there's chatter around the region, you know, the kings get together and they talk. You know, I don't know, I don't know where they do that. You know, the bathroom, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> but they, they have their, their way of doing this. And so they get together and they, they chatter and they talk. And there was this one group of people, the, the king of the, um, of the Gibeonites, or, uh, I believe, yeah, who um, made a peace treaty with um, Israel, with Joshua. And so there were these five other kings that banded together and said, all right, here's what we're going to do. Let's go, let's go fight Gibeon. Let's go fight those people. And we'll take them on to send a message kind of a thing. And yet Joshua and the Israelites had made this peace treaty. And so um, they're going to be called upon. So we'll pick up the story in Joshua chapter 10, verse 7. It says, so Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his entire army, including all the best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. I've given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. After an all night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. And so here in the story, word is sent to Joshua uh, from the Gibeonites saying, hey, we're being attacked. Uh, we have a treaty with you. It, it's, it's time to, to make good on that deal. And so Joshua, you know, inquires of the Lord. And the Lord's like, all right, go. So here's the first key, show up. You got to show up. Be where you said you're, you're going to be. Do what you said you're going to do. You got you to show up. There's a, a scripture in the New Testament, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7. It says, I fought the good fight. I've kept the faith. I've finished the race. I want this to be true for me and for every one of us, that we could say this. I fought the good fight. I've kept the faith. I've finished the race. That when God called us and and invited us into what he was doing, into the battle that was raging, that we didn't shrink back, but we're of those who press on and press forward and step in. That, the, that we rely and depend on the spirit that he's given us, a spirit of power and love and self-discipline, not a spirit of timidity and fear, but of love and power and self-discipline. That we don't shrink back, but we press in, show up. And so we're burning daylight here. So my encouragement is let's go. Let's go. You ever do this one? Let's go. Like this, uh, this is our new celebration, any kind of sporting endeavor or whatever's going on. Let's go. Every time something good happens, let's go. <laughs> Have you guys, you guys may not play sports. You've, you've heard it, right? Let's go. Am I like, let's go. Don't you want to do it? Hey, like we're the people of God. He's calling us into our homes. Let's go. He's calling us into our communities. Let's go. He's calling us into our world. What are we going to do? Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. We're burning daylight here. Let's go. Joshua didn't sit around and go, well, let's evaluate our strategy here. Let's go. Let's go. So as we think about let's go, okay, keep your word. Do what you say you're going to do. So if, if, if Jesus is Lord, and I'm not trying to be heavy handed here, just realistic with you. If Jesus is Lord, then follow him. If Jesus is Lord, then trust him. If Jesus is Lord, obey him. If Jesus is Lord, believe him. Not just in him, but believe him. That he is for you, not against you. And that his life that he has for you is real. Believe him to, and keep your word to him. 
When he says give, give. When he says go, go. When he says take steps of faith, take steps of faith. Let's go. Bring your best. Let's bring, our, let's bring our best to the Lord. I do like what that says. It says, so Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his entire army, entire army, including all the best fighting men. Like there, I just love how sometimes in the Bible, there's like these little like additional things. Like he went with his whole army. You know, it's, and, and so maybe Joshua was like, okay, let's take the whole army, but I don't know, let's get all the best fighters. All right, uh, Jeremy, Jacob, whatever your name is. <laughs> you guys stay behind. <laughs> No, including all the best fighting. Like, take your, take your best. Because we, we do that. Like, we're burning daylight here. That's, that's, again, why I'm always like, seek the Lord early in the morning. Okay. When I rise, seek the Lord. Uh-huh. Give him the very first part of the day. Start the day with him and continue the day with him. Uh-huh. Listen to him. Give him glory and praise. Exalt him. Say, God, that you're greater than me, and I'm submitted to you. Bring him your best. Bring him your first fruits. The, right off the top, not the leftovers, but start there. Bring him your best. Give him your best energy. Give him your best life. Give him your best love. Give him all your, your best. Let's go. Fear not. The Lord told Joshua, do not be afraid of them. The thing, that's the thing about fear. Like, like when, when we say, okay, oh, the fear, I mean, the, hey, listen, some people say that fear is false evidence appearing real. One of those, you know, like false evidence appearing real. And, and you know, that's what the letters F-E-A-R stands for, false evidence appearing real. Uh, I say baloney. No, it's pretty real evidence. <laughs> I just be, I'm, I'm a truth teller. There are plenty of things to be afraid of. Very real and obvious things. Going against five kings? that have joined together, not one, but one, two, three, four, five. There's a really real fear here. Plus you're doing it with a bunch of people who just 40 years earlier were slaves in Egypt. So here here they are. I mean, they're new to this whole thing. Joshua does not have a rich training in military strategy. And yet he's made a pact. God is fighting for them. He says to go, so keep your word, bring your best, fear not. Because if we decide to, to fear, that's going to put a stop. And we can be aware and we don't have to pretend like the, the evidence isn't real. Of course it's real. We, we've seen that. We know the risks are real. I'm not telling you like, oh, everything will be okay. <laughs> that's crazy. Jesus said, hey, in this, in this life, you will have trouble. He says, but take heart. I've overcome the world. In this world, you're going to have trouble. In fact, if you're following Jesus and stepping into faith, trouble's probably going to be on the rise, not on the decrease. That's okay, because he's with you. And so we're stepping right into the, the face of fear. So, so fear not, don't be defined by fear. We can feel fear without being afraid. Did you, do you know that? We can feel fear without being afraid. It's not the thing that defines us. We can feel fear and still be faithful. We can feel fear and still be obedient. We can feel fear and still be brave. So no, it's not like, hey, ignore it. No, be aware of it, but fear not. And then don't give up. Let's go. Don't give up. After an all-night march, God sends them on their way. I, I mean, typically you might think, okay, uh, let's, uh, let's get up early and, and then go. They ran out of daylight. It was an all-night march. And, and so by the time they just don't give up, keep going, keep taking steps of faith. So key number one for every battle, show up. Key number two for every battle is watch what God does. Now, this is important because we can, we can start to think, okay, how am I going to do this? Well, no, this is about watch what, watch what God does. God's going to do some stuff. He's the one who, who is doing this. And so watch what God does in these, these spiritual battles that we're fighting. He's the one who is able, and it's him who wins the victory. So watch what God does. So let's check out what God does. The next verse, verse 10. It says, the Lord threw them into confusion before Israel. So Joshua and the Israelites defeated them completely at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road up to Beth Horon and cut them down all the way to Azekah and Mekeda. And as they fled before Israel down the road from Beth Horon to Azekah, the Lord hurled large hailstones down on them. And more of them died from the hail than were killed by the swords of the Israelites. Okay. 
On the day uh, the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, sun stand still over Gibeon and you moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies as it is written in, in the book of Jashar. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. Let's go. Watch what God does. Watch what God does. They, 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 were, they, were, they were running out of daylight. And so Joshua says, son, stand still. Son, like, Lord, we need more time. We need more time. You're, you're doing this here, but we, we need more time. Watch what God does. Now, I do like oh, what God does in this story. Check out what God did. Uh, number one, he threw the enemy into confusion. So after this all-night march, they caught him by surprise. Like, boo. <laughs> Five armies, five kings, and Joshua and the Israelites, they've marched all night. Joshua and, and his entire army, including all his best fighting men, they march all night, and they don't wait. They don't take a nap. They, they don't have breakfast. They just step into it. Okay, hey, let's do this. And the enemy was surprised and thrown into confusion. Let me tell you something. If you take people who were formerly defined by fear, and enslaved to fear, who are now redeemed, the redeemed of the Lord, who are living by faith and taking steps of faith into the face of fear, the enemy is gonna be caught off guard. He is gonna be caught off guard. And it will throw him into confusion because that's not who we were, but it is who we are. And this is what God does. Watch what God does. He will throw the enemy into confusion as we take steps of faith into what God is calling us to do. He'll throw the enemy into confusion. Then, if that's not enough, he's going to throw in some hailstones. <laughs> Let's go, Lord. I love what the scripture says. Uh, large hailstones, and the Lord's like, I'm going to get in on this. <laughs> Okay, I'm, 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 just so there's no confusion here, let me show you what I can do. I mean, because the, the Joshua and the army were probably like, man, we are dominating the foes. We are getting after the foes. Like, we are routing them. We're driving them out. They're confused. Now they're on the run. We're routing them. And God's like, hold on, watch this. And it says there that more of them were killed by the hellstones than by the swords of the Israelite army. Like, God doesn't want there to be any confusion here. It, it, this is his work. We're, we're in on what he's doing. Because that's the thing. Sometimes we, we get ourselves mixed up in all this, like even in trying to share God's love with our ones and take steps of faith into the face of fear into our homes and neighborhoods and communities and workplaces and schools. And we step in there, but somehow the other gets twisted and it becomes about us. And then we get all ouchy and weird. Yeah. You ever notice that? And then we get all grouchy. Ouchy and grouchy Christians, the worst variety. Because it, it, it's no good. It's not, it's not helpful. Because somewhere in there, we made it about ourselves. And we're like, how dare you? Somebody, you know, doesn't want to receive God's love from us or doesn't want to hear about it or they reject us. How dare you? Come on. <laughs> Chill. Watch what the Lord does. The battle, this battle belongs to him. It's, it's his. We, just, we get to participate with him. He'll, he'll do it. And then, uh, obviously, the best part of this is he threw time out the window. So he threw the enemy into confusion. He threw hailstones at them, and then he threw time out the window. Because that's the thing. He's eternal. And if you truly are the redeemed of the Lord, then we have life in him that is eternal life. We're not defined by the temporary anymore. That's why we don't have the same worries that everybody has. That's why we don't have to ge be so geeked up and upset about politics. And we don't have to be so geeked up and upset about, you know, the news. And we don't have to be so uh, geeked up and upset uh, about, you know, whatever's being thrown at us all the time. We don't, have to, we don't have to react to all that. Instead, we have the opportunity to make a godly response. We, we've got time. We have eternity. And our God is the, the God of time. So let's go. Let's, let's show up. Let's watch what God does. And then here's my favorite part. The third key is then to celebrate the victory. Can we get a woohoo for that? Celebrate the victory. That's why we're a woohoo church. Woohoo, we, we, cel we celebrate the victory. That's why at one church, we, we have a high five every week. 
We're celebrating just the top five things every week that, that we've seen God do. And that high five is such a worshipful component. That's why we put it right you know, in the heart of, of our worship services. And we wanna recognize what God is doing and celebrate the victory. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he's been redeemed from the hand of the foe. A big part of celebrating is telling the story. So we get that show up, let's go. Then you're in it and you're like, oh no. But then the Lord does it and we're like, yeah. And then we're at the after party going, did you see that? Man, they were running and we were chasing the after and then the rail stones. And then Joshua was like, sun stands still. And we're like, that's not gonna work. And the sun did stand still and it did go down for like half a day. And oh my, that was incredible. That's what we do. We talk about the big plays. Man, if they'd had Sports Center, this thing would have been dun 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 dun. <laughs> the Israelite army <laughs> routed them, and the sun stood still. Let's watch that replay. Ah, my eyes. Okay. <laughs> Verse fourteen. It says, there's never been a day like it before or since. A day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Amen. Then Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp at Gilgal. Man, there's never been another day like it. Before or since. A day when the Lord listened to human beings. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. I don't, I mean, the battles we fight... And God's in them. We step into faith with him, show up. Watch what God does. Celebrate the victory. Tell those stories. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he's redeemed from the hand of the foe. You have stories to tell. What have you seen God do? Because there's never been a day like that before or since. Because God is doing new things. God is doing, he's not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. And our God is doing new things. He's doing things right now. Our God is alive and active. And he is moving and he is mighty and we are seeing him at work. And so we have so much to celebrate. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. This celebrating is telling the story. Did you see what God did? Did you hear what God did? And as we tell the story about how he's delivered from the hand of the foe again and again, this is a new story. That's why it's called good news. Number one, it's good. It's good. Number two, it's new. His mercies are new for us every morning. They're brand new. The grace he gives us is new. It doesn't, what, what was yesterday is, is done. I mean, we can sit around and talk about our failures uh, till the cows come home. I don't, why, why are the cows out? Nobody understands that phrase. <laughs> somebody, somebody needs to work with the cattle. But we can talk about our failures. All week. Let's talk about what, what the Lord has done. Let's remember that. Because he's not dwelling on our failures. He's not dwelling on our past. What he's doing is inviting us into what is new. And he has new grace for you, new love for you, new forgiveness for you, new mercies for you. He also has new battles and new work for you. So show up for burning daylight. Watch what God is doing. Check it out. Be a part of it. Be in the midst of it, right in the thick of it. And then celebrate the victory. Tell the story. God has demonstrated his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ Jesus came and died for us. That's really good news. God is for you, not against you. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what's been done to you, God is for you, not against you. Do you believe that? Yes. Can you say, God is for me? God is for me. Yes, he is. God is for me. So let's go. Let's show up. Watch what he does. Celebrate the victory. And so God so loved you that he would send his son Jesus to come and die for you, to make a way for you to be a part of his family and his kingdom and what he's doing to share in his victory, the resurrection from the dead. Amen. And so whatever you were, he has something new for you. Redemption, a new purpose, and he's not done with you. So let's go. As we celebrate and remember in a time of communion, 
This really is a celebration of what God has done. We've seen what he's done. He, he sent a son, a savior for us. And whether you have the bread and juice with you or not, you can participate in this time by remembering and by receiving the love of Jesus and the salvation and the grace of Jesus and by surrendering to his lordship. And so when we have communion together, we are remembering that Jesus took bread and he broke it and he offered it to his friends and he said, this is my body which is given for you. And if you're saying yes to Jesus and the victory that he has won for us, then let's eat. And Jesus also took a cup. He said, this cup represents a new covenant, a new promise, a new relational dynamic with him, where he's not only Savior, not only our Redeemer, but our Lord. Not just any Lord, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. And so when we drink from this cup, we're saying yes to the King of Kings. We drink to the King. I would like to pray a blessing over you. And just invite you to be still and ask God to show you what he's calling you into. What is your next step of faith? And ask him to give you the courage to do it. He'll provide everything you need to do, everything he's called you to do. Father, help us to hear from you right now. And to respond. To take our next step of faith. Show us what to do and give us courage to do it. And thank you that we are your redeemed you have purpose for us. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest, and without you, I fall apart, you're the one. Let go.
Psalm 107 2, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Be ready to tell your story. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you'd like to give now, here are a few ways that you can do that and thank you for your generosity. Don't forget to head to our YouTube channel and make sure that you like and subscribe. We wanna reach the most people in the shortest time. Hey, I'm so glad that we had this time together. It's good to come together and worship the Lord. We're here every week. Hope to see you back real soon. And until then, from all of us here at One Church, have a good one.